Hello and welcome. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Thank you so much for joining us for another segment of Health Professional Radio. In this segment, we're going to be speaking with returning guest, Dr. Shankar Musnuri. He's joining us from Ocugen Incorporated to talk about the company's current work on a vaccine to treat COVID-19. Welcome back, Shankar. How have you been? I'm doing great, Neil. Thank you so much for having me today. Well, I'm glad that you could take the time and return with us. For listeners who may not be familiar with you as a contributor, why don't you reacquaint us and tell us a little bit about yourself and about Ocugen, and then we'll jump right into the latest developments at Ocugen. Ocugen is a patient-centric biotech uh, company focused on vaccines targeting public health and uh, cell and gene therapies targeting unmet medical needs through courageous innovation. Uh, we have two vaccines, COVID vaccines, in development today. Um, we also have very, very exciting gene therapy programs, OQ400 and OQ410. OQ400 targets many inherited retinal diseases, which are orphan in nature, with a single product. And OQ410 targets age-related macular degeneration, dry AMD. Specifically, there are a million patients in the U.S. alone with a severe form of dry AMD, which is geographic atrophy. We're targeting to file IND to get this into clinic phase one, two next year in the second quarter. Ocugen is already in clinical trials for a COVID-19 vaccine, as I mentioned in the introduction. Tell us more about this vaccine and what it's called and who you're in conjunction with developing it. Yeah, there are um, two um, COVID-19 vaccines we're working on which are under development at Ocugen. Uh, one of them is the latest one, uh, mucosal vaccine, which is licensed from Washington University. Um, it's uh, targeted specifically for um, generating mucosal immunity because if you look at the uh, vaccine landscape in the US, uh, there's a tremendous amount of transmission. Everybody is getting infected even after boosters. So the way we all believe and all the scientific experts in the field believe is to you know target controlling the transmission. That's how you control the pandemic. So having a mucosal vaccine which can generate mucosal immunity. That means um, like um, the entry points where the virus enters, like a nose and you know other um, entry points, and where you generate a strong mucosal immunity, you can control the um, protect the individuals who take the vaccine potentially, as well as control the transmission of the disease. Mm-hmm. That's how they control the pandemic. So we're working on that. Um, and we are also working on, we've been working on a vaccine called Covaxin. It's based on inactivated uh, viral vaccine. It's a whole virus and it's made similar to how today the polio vaccine is made, um, a flu vaccine, rabies vaccine, many other vaccines, which have a track record of success in controlling infectious diseases. And uh, currently, that vaccine is going through phase two, three clinical trials in the U.S. Uh, what we are trying to do is do this is an immunobridging trial. It bridges to um, data generated by our partners in India um, on Covaxin, which they did a large phase three clinical trial. So that's the phase two, three clinical trial we're going through in the U.S. So those are the two vaccines we're working on currently um, to contribute to you know controlling this pandemic. So as far as the timeline for both of these uh, clinical programs, are they similar or are they vastly separated as far as um, the next steps? I mean, they are um, separated in a way. Um, Covaxin is already undergoing a phase two, three clinical trial. Uh, Once uh, we're anticipating some interim uh, results um, sometime in the next few months. And once we get the data, um, obviously we're going to analyze and see you know, how this um, whole virus-based vaccine is going to do, because this is very distinct vaccine uh, compared to vaccines in the U.S. today. And all the vaccines are based on the spike protein, one part of the virus. This has a whole virus-based, so you've got a broad immune response. So we will get some data from this clinical trial, anticipating to get um, some data on uh, booster uh, on subjects who took mRNA vaccine before as a primary series. So based on that, you know, there is, we still believe there is a need for safety study in U.S. demographic. Even though there is a large data available elsewhere, um, based on the FDA guidance, you know, we need to show immunobridging based on the current data and also safety. So th- those things we have to work with uh, um, different um, 
U.S. government agencies to ensure, first of all, we have aligned a strategy with FDA for BLA submission, what is needed, and also seek some government support because we believe this vaccine is much needed in the U.S. for um, producing a broad immune response, and it could play a key role in controlling the pandemic. The second vaccine is mucosal vaccine, uh, which uh, you know we licensed recently, and we're working uh, with uh, you know various government agencies. Um, so this vaccine obviously has to go through phase one, two clinical trial initially, then go into phase three. Um, the background about this vaccine, I'd like to spend a little time. Um, the mucosal vaccines, this is not the first time we're developing it. The concept is already proven in India and China. Uh, our partners who we partnered on Covaxin, Bharat Biotech from India, they already took this vaccine, licensed it from Washington University, same vaccine, and they already got emergency use authorization in India. They did show by giving it intranasally, it uh, produced good immune responses, and uh, they do have emergency authorization. Similarly, um, there is a large biotech company in China. Uh, they used a similar platform, adenoviral vector platform um, vaccine, which they produced, and they did studies uh, using inhalation route and they showed um, good immune responses, and that vaccine got launched um, in China. So from two large countries using this platform technology, um, adenoviral vector-based mucosal vaccines, and they, they got uh, you know, emergency use authorization, and uh, they got launched. So at least you know, from proof of concept perspective, we know um, these vaccines given mucosally work, they do produce, uh, you know, reasonable um, IgGs, which are like a um, antibodies in serum, as well as mucosal IgA uh, antibodies, which is really important to protect um, from transmission of the disease. Could you give us an update on OCU 400? I understand there's a gene therapy platform that you're developing to address multiple blindness diseases, as well as NeoCart, your cell therapy to treat cartilage defects in the knee. And then give us a website where our listeners can learn more, if you would. Yeah, OCU 400, our gene therapy program, we're very excited about it. Um, uh, we believe this is a breakthrough and game-changing technology platform. It's based on modifier genes. Now, this is targeted specifically for inherited retinal diseases, such as retinitis pigmentosa, Leber congenital amaurosis. Between these two diseases, they got over 125,000 patients in the U.S. struggling. And currently, over 125 genes can be mutated to cause this disease. So taking a traditional gene therapy approach, developing over 100 products is almost impossible for biotech companies. And uh, most of these patients are in desperate need Many of them could become legally blind by the time they're in mid-40s. So what we have is a modifier gene, which we believe can target potentially all these patients with a single product, which is going through the clinical trials right now. Great. And it's currently going through phase one, two clinical trials. We're anticipating some you know, um, efficacy. The primary object is safety, but uh, we, we're anticipating some efficacy signal sometime next year on this. Then we will embark on a phase three clinical trial by the end of next year in U.S. and Europe. And um, there is also NeoCart, which is a cell therapy product, uh, which we are trying to finalize a um, confirmatory phase three clinical trial protocol with FDA. And uh, we're also building our own cell therapy facilities to support it from a manufacturing perspective. And uh, this is, uh, again, one of its kind. Um, it's a, a 3D um, you know, cell therapy product for cartilage repairs um, for knees. And uh, um, our goal is to finalize the FDA protocol, build our facilities next year, and then embark on to phase three clinical trials so we can bring this much needed uh, cell therapy product to the market. Uh, once again, this cell therapy product has a um, regenerative advanced um, medicine designation, or MAT, from FDA. And that helps us to uh, speed up the development and also approval process for this. For more details on these products, please go to www.oxygen.com. Shankar, I appreciate you returning and, and I do uh, look forward to our next conversation, hoping that you'll return. 
Thank you, Neil. Thank you for having me today. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard, in conversation with returning guest, Dr. Shankar Musnuri. Audio copies of this program are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. You can also subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, listen in, download at Anchor Spotify, and be sure and subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com, Health Professional Radio.